my first uh, lecture is about uh, diffuse ground gas, how to find a way to the water. So this is the outline of my talk. We will see some definition, differential diagnosis, and then I will uh, talk about acute and then chronic ground gas, and we'll um, talk briefly about uh, the main pitfalls. So ground gas is a with capacity without obscuration of the underlying vascular marking. And this is the main difference with consolidation. This is ground gas and this is an area of consolidation. And you can see, we can still see the vessels uh, through ground gas, whereas for consolidation, we can only see the uh, bronchi containing at the histopathologic level, um, ground gas may be due to different uh, process, a partial filling of the upper large spaces, and in that case, it is uh, due to airspace disease. But the uh, complex thing is that ground gas may be created by a thickening of the alveolar walls or the uh, septal interstitium, and in that case, it is due to an interstitial disease. And sometimes <coughs> it's a combination of both mechanisms. This is why it is um, difficult for us. And so um, what I suggest is to have a systematic <coughs> approach which is based on the morphology. Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous ground gas? <laughs> the distribution, and also to check for ancillary findings such as traction bronchiectasis, infrared ground lines, cysts, and to check if there is a sparing of circulatory pulmonary lobule. And it's also very important to correlate our findings with uh, the clinical history, are the symptoms chronic or acute, what is the patient's immune status, the smoking history, and the pre-existing medical condition. Unfortunately, sometimes we are lacking such information, but we need to um, try to find them. <coughs> One important distinction should be uh, made with <coughs> mosaic perfusion. Uh, mosaic perfusion is um, the fact that there is um, a difference in the number and the size of vessels between areas of increased and decreased attenuation. And it's not the case for uh, ground glass. And uh, mosaic perfusion uh, can be due to two different uh, diseases. Uh, of course, uh, vascular obstruction. In that case, um, <coughs> the, uh, the blood flow is uh, redistributed in uh, normal perfused areas. You can see uh, this patient as chronic thromboembolism with very small arteries here. And this uh, is the normal perfused lung. He has a very severe disease. But perfusion, mosaic perfusion can also be due to uh, bronchial diseases. And in that case, um, <coughs> there is no vascular obstruction, but vascu vasoconstriction <coughs> and the blood flow is redistributed in normal ventilated uh, lung areas. <coughs> so let's see now acute ground glass. Uh, for uh, acute ground glass, it is very important to correlate with uh, the patient's immune status and pre-existing medical <coughs> condition. And maybe the first question should be, <coughs> can it be pulmonary edema? <coughs> And for that, we need to analyze uh, the size of the pulmonary veins to check for pleural effusion and to see if there are associated uh, um, smooth, um, a smooth thickening of the internal of the septa. And if pulmonary edema is ruled out, then the next step should be a bronchial alveolar lavage uh, because it's very difficult to differentiate uh, the different pulmonary <coughs> diagnosis. This is, uh, in that case, it's a pulmonary edema, and in this patient, it's a pneumocystis infection. And you can see there are very, very small differences. Uh, we cannot <coughs> differentiate uh, these uh, images. And this is, in, the, in this patient, it's a 
uh, intraalveolar hemorrhage. <coughs> Uh, this, um, it, these images were given to me by our pathologist and uh, I think it nicely explains why we have uh, ground glass uh, in uh, resistance <coughs> infection. The uh, alveolar lumen are filled with this material which is um, containing here the, the vacuolated areas correspond to uh, the cyst of the of pneumocystis. Infection concern HIV patients, <coughs> but also patients with oral process of immune depression, uh, like chemotherapy or long standing <coughs> steroid therapy. In HIV patients, the CD4 count is usually less than 200. And uh, the typical uh, appearance is uh, the presence of ground glass nice. uh, with uh, some areas of normal gland. Um, sometimes it is, uh, this is uh, another case, sometimes there are areas of consolidation <coughs> and also the disease can be unilateral. Chronic ground glass uh, is um, uh, more maybe um, um, easy to analyze if we uh, take into account this uh, different things, the distribution, the ancillary filings, and the heterogeneity. If the crown glass is uh, shows subtural basal predominance, <coughs> it's very suggestive of lung fibrosis. This is the case of a patient with uh, systemic sclerosis, and you can see that the crown glass is uh, predominant in the uh, lower part of the lung, and is associated with a small traction of bronchiectasis here. So uh, these bronchiectasis are an important uh, <coughs> ancillary finding. Uh, this is another example here. You can <coughs> see here the dilated bronchi in these patients with uh, NSIP. Uh, Intraalveolar lines are a second thing that you uh, should um, analyze. Uh, and when it is the predominant uh, finding, uh, the association of uh, ground glass and intraalveolar line is called as a crazy paving pattern. And <coughs> usually it is a reaction to a chronic alveolar filling. Um, um, this is here the case of a patient, sorry, um, we had in my institution a lady who was drinking two to three liters a day of um, paraffin. Uh, just to uh, remain thin, because uh, with that way she induced a malabsorption. But unfortunately, the, the oil was going into her, her lung and created this uh, uh, feature of uh, crazy paving, uh, ground glass with superimposed intraalveolar line. Uh, this is a young patient who <coughs> has a, a idiopathic alveolar proteinosis and also of pneumothorax, as you can see here. And yet, here we have the, that finding of uh, ground glass with intralobular line. This is called the crazy paving uh, pattern, and it was first described in uh, alveolar proteinosis, but it's not uh, specific to that diagnostic, it, we can see. It's in um, lipoid pneumonia, just as I uh, showed you. But also in any uh, diseases with chronic alveolar filling. Um, it can be uh, seen in um, <coughs> um, uh, mucinous uh, adenocarcinoma that was uh, formerly called bronchial alveolar cell carcinoma as well. This is another patient with uh, ground glass <coughs> and um, cra crazy baby pattern, and it is alveolar proteinosis again. Sometimes these intralveolar lines can indicate fibrosis, but they are usually <coughs> and nearly all the time associated with uh, traction bronchiectasis. The presence of cyst is an interesting uh, finding because uh, the association of ground glass with cyst should um, uh, raise the possibility of lymphoid interstitial pneumonia. 
um, which is encountered in patients with immune disorders, such as uh, children or HIV <coughs> status. And uh, this uh, he is an example of lymphoid interstitial pneumonia. You can see <coughs> ground glass, and also these uh, thin walls uh, air containing cells. <coughs> But uh, I think that uh, most of the time, in uh, uh, this is a patient with a Sjögren syndrome, you can see very numerous cysts, and there are differences in attenuation that are not really ground glass. It is most uh, mosaic perfusion, and this is the minimum intensity projection showing uh, nicely the difference in uh, attenuation. And um, it's... Uh, the, the lymphoid interstitial <coughs> pneumonia in Jogren uh, is characterized by uh, bronchial wall infiltration by uh, lymphocytes, and this explains why we have a uh, mosaic perfusion of uh, bronchial origin. Sometimes pneumocystis infection can be uh, subacute, so in uh, patients with ground glass and cyst, we, we need to uh, uh, think to this diagnosis as well. <coughs> the, the fourth ancillary finding I want to describe is the sparing of uh, singulary pulmonary lobule, and it is quite uh, characteristic for hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Uh, this is here uh, a case of uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and it's not at the at very acute stage, uh, this is here a patient with a bird Francis lung. You can see here uh, ground glass and sparing of uh, singular pulmonary lobule. And one year before, we had the typical acute uh, appearance of, uh, alveolar, uh, of uh, extrinsic allergi allergic alveolitis with centric lobular nodules. And at the su superficial uh, stage, uh, we don't have these um, uh, central lobular no nodules anymore, but the sparing of uh, <coughs> plus the sparing of secondary pulmonary <coughs> lobule. This is another example here. And finally, in some patients, we have uh, this, which is called uh, the head shift pattern. And uh, we have very heterogeneous ground glass a normal lung and areas of lobular sparing, so a very heterogeneous um, feature. And this is when there is a combination of an airway disease and an interstitial process, and it is due to either hypersensitivity pneumonitis or sarcoidosis. Um, there's a um, smoking-related uh, disease, which is desquamative interstitial pneumonia, with, in which diffuse ground glass is the predominant sign. So we should think to this diagnosis <coughs> in smokers, even though it's uh, quite rare. It's only uh, less than 3% of interstitial lung diseases. And I have to admit that the diagnosis is quite difficult to uh, assess only on the basis of uh, uh, HRCT findings. We have diffuse ground glass opacities that are bilateral and symmetric <coughs> in uh, the vast majority of cases. Uh, they, are, they show a ba basal and peripheral predominance in 60% of patients. Um, they are patchy in 20% and diffuse in 20%. And microcysts are found in half of the patients. Uh, this is a, a, a case with uh, these uh, um, lines here. It's only uh, ground glass, and in this patient we have these small cysts, um, and um, this is a, a case from uh, that paper. Some pitfalls to, to end. Uh, it can be very difficult to detect diffuse ground glass when it's uh, very homogeneous and uh, very subtle. And so we need to, to use this sign, which is the dark bronchus sign. It's uh, an enhanced contrast between the air within the bronchi and the attenuation of the lung parenchyma. And um, 
Also, another pitfall is when ground glass is superimposed with centrilobular emphysema, and this should not be taken for the association of ground glass and cysts. These are not cysts, it's a underlying centrilobular emphysema. So to end with my talk, uh, I would like to uh, give you some uh, take home points. Um, it's important to differentiate between ground glass and mosaic perfusion. And so the question that we should have is, what is the vessel size? Is it homogeneous in areas of increase or decreased attenuation? Regarding acute ground glass, the first question is, can it be pulmonary edema? And if not, the next step should be uh, to do a bronchoalveolar lavage to find out if there are signs of intraalveolar hemorrhage or uh, homocystic infection, but also um, other uh, source of uh, alveolar uh, filling. And it's important to have this information is the patient immunocompromised, is there a renal acute failure? <coughs> Regarding chronic ground glass, what is the distribution? Uh, in cases with basal subpro predominance, uh, it's uh, a, um, <coughs> a sign uh, that we have in uh, lung fibrosis. And regarding the ancillary finding, traction bronchiectasis indicate fibrosis. <coughs> Assist uh, are seen in Sjogren syndrome, um, but also of the mosistic infection, and very small cysts in half of patients with uh, TEEP. The sparing of individual secondary pulmonary lobule is a sign that we have in hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, and sarcoidosis. And lastly, crazy paving is uh, usually reactional to chronic alveolar filling, such as in alveolar proteinosis. <coughs> and uh, lipoid pneumonia, <coughs> but largely all causes of chronic alveolar filling. Thank you for your attention.